Hello, how are you doing? I'm Mohamed Sadri. I'm a member of Microelectronics System Design Research Group of TU Kaiserslautern. And this is video number seven that we are creating in the series of videos that we are creating for zinc and zinc training. And we have called this video, this specific session, we have called Creating Custom Axoid Master Peripherals the easy and high performance way. So the purpose here is to talk about how we can create modules that contain Axoy master plugs. And we want to do it in a, as easy as possible way. And at the same time, we want to use a method that gives us some level of acceptable performance. So I briefly go over how, what's the problem and how we are going to do that. Here, mm, the table of contents of this session, we begin with the motivation that we have to add Axon master plugs to our hardware accelerators. And then, um, in fact, we talk briefly what are the methods that you can create modules containing Axoy master plugs. And then uh, we propose a, a very simple example design. And then through a practical session, we go and we design that system. And we see how the designing practically should happen. OK, so as the motivating part, suppose that I have developed a hardware accelerator. And this hardware accelerator is a kind of simple pixel processing engine. So what it does, it receives the stream of pixels. And then it performs some kind of processing on the received stream of pixels. And at the end, it reports the results to the CPU. For processing the pixels, however, my hardware accelerator needs big portions of memory. This is because the thing that the hardware accelerator is processing is actually frames of images. And as you know, each frame may take 2 megabytes, 4 megabytes, or even big numbers. So the hardware accelerator needs to receive the stream of pixels, needs to, for example, perform the first stage of processing, put the result or partially the result on the DRAM memory, then read, read it back, perform another processing, put again the result on the memory. And when the algorithm is completely finished, it will report the final result to the CPU. The important point and the thing that is new here is that your hardware accelerator should be able to access the DRAM memory directly. OK, we know a lot about the Zinc architecture. We know that on this boundary, there are some high performance ports. They are slaves for the logic that we have on the PL. So I need an Axon master here. And the Axon master should get connected to one of these high performance ports. And then the important point is that this hardware accelerator will initiate read and write transactions through this high performance port to the DRAM memory space. But before going to that point, let's have a look at other possible solutions. Suppose that I don't know how I can add Axon master plugs to my module. What are the possible solutions to solve the problem? The main possible solution is to use an Axon central DMA module. So your hardware accelerator, instead of performing and initiating the write and read request to the DRAM memory, it puts this duty uh, for the DMA engine. So what is happening is that, for example, through the GP0 port, the ARM host every time programs your DMA engine. 
Since the hardware accelerator and the arm host are working in collaboration, the arm host knows what types of memory transactions this hardware accelerator needs to perform to do the processing task. So the ARM engine programs every time the central DMA engine so that the central DMA through its own axon master port reads the pixels from the hardware accelerator and then puts the pixels to the DRAM memory or vice versa. Reads the pixels from the DRAM memory and then it puts the pixels back to the hardware accelerator. So in this scenario, what's happening is that our hardware accelerator doesn't have its own XI master port, but it's an XI slave port. And this XI slave port will be practically connected to a DMA engine. And the DMA engine will be programmed by the CPU so that the required data transfers between hardware accelerator and the DRAM memory happen. One small note in this block diagram is that I am already adding this second XI slave port. And suppose that for now, this XI slave port is a kind of port that's only used for configuration and re reporting the states to the CPU. So it's not ge getting involved directly in the data processing flow. It's only for configuration. Now, this solution has obviously problems. The biggest problem is that whenever any processing is needed to be done by the hardware accelerator, the CPU gets involved. So the CPU is not able to freely perform its own responsibilities, but is always, get, it's always involved in programming the DMA engine at a suitable time and in a suitable manner. And then what happens, for example, if the type of processing algorithm that we are implementing here requires a very large number of accesses to the memory in small sizes? So for example, every time that a read or write is happening, the size of the data which is being written or it being read back is actually maybe 16 bytes. And the type of algorithm requires a very large number of read and write transactions like this. Then the performance will seriously drop in this scenario because the programming of the CDMA itself takes time. So the CPU will be always involved. The performance will not be acceptable. OK, we can improve this architecture in a way that allows the CPU to get isolated from the operation of hardware accelerator. What can we do is shown in this block diagram. Here, I use the XI central DMA engine, but I configure it in a scatter gather mode. Now, I can put the operations that the XI CDMA engine needs to do in this block memory here. These operations, or better to say these descriptors, will be placed here by the hardware accelerator. The interface between the hardware accelerator and the dual port memory that holds the descriptors is a very simple block RAM memory based interface. So it is very simple to implement. And then the descriptors here will be read by the XI CDMA and they will be executed one after another. So whenever my hardware accelerator needs to perform some kind of read or write operation to the DRAM memory, what it does is it just puts suitable and correct descriptors in this memory. And then the DMA will read the descriptors, and then it will perform the required transactions. In this solution, 
the CPU is practically not needed anymore. Maybe it is needed only for initializing the CDMA core for the first time and initializing the CDMA core maybe after some specific intervals or maybe in the beginning of each set of frames. But overall, the CPU can freely perform its own task. Thanks to the scatter gather possibility that we have for the central DMA engine. But you know, this solution, it works, but I, I personally, I don't have a good feeling about this solution. I feel as the designer of this hardware accelerator, I feel I don't have complete control on the timing of the transactions that should be performed to the memory. I don't see why I should put a completely separate different modules in my system just to be able to initiate transactions to the memory. It was perfect for me if I could have my own Axoi master block here. So we come to the next solution. The next solution is that our hardware accelerator has its own dedicated Axoi master block. And practically what's happening is that the RTL, the code that I'm writing here, the design that we are creating here, will talk directly to this Axoi master block. And with a very low latency, whenever we need, we can initiate read and write transactions to the memory. And this Axoi master block is completely under the control of the logic that I have here. So everything is in my hand and under my control, under my observation, and this really helps me to design better, to create a more high performance module, and even later to debug this design better and to maintain and upgrade it in a faster time. And this is the topic of this session. How do I add an Axon master plug to my own module, to my own RTL? So there are methods to do that. Here, I am listing the methods through which we can go and add, in fact, an Axon master plug to our own design. Obviously, the first one is you're a professional designer and you have time so you sit and you begin writing the entire RTL from scratch and based on the specification which is given to you by ARM for the XI. And obviously, yes, this solution can sometimes be the best solution, especially when you have very tight requirements on the latency of accesses to different locations in the system and on the performance. But I would say this will happen very rarely. And for most of the situations, it's not really needed to sit and create an XI master plug from scratch completely. So there are other solutions that can be followed and they are most of the times useful and enough. So as we talked uh, about IPIF, blocks in the previous session, there exists IPIF block, IP interface blocks that can be used to have actual master blocks inside our own module. So there exists practically two IPIFs for XI master interfaces. The one gives you, in fact, an XI master light interface the other one gives your module an XI master burst interface. So practically there are two cores coming from Xilinx as RTL that you can take these cores, you can put them in your design, you can instantiate that module inside your design, and then you can connect its port 
to the rest of the ports and the rest of the logic that you have in your design. And that works for you like an Axi master. So it contains the Axi four ports and gets connected to the rest of the Axi world. Now, another solution that we followed in the previous session for having Axi slave interfaces is in fact the auto-generated codes which um, are produced by Vivado when you create custom peripherals using Vivado environment. So if you follow the create custom peripherals wizard of Vivado environment, as I showed you in the previous session, you can have, in fact, Axi master and Axi slave plugs inside your custom peripheral. And as you generate, in fact, that peripheral using Vivado, it also inserts an example running easy to understand code for you for the plug inside your code. So you can follow this and you can have an Axi Master Lite or Axi Master even burst automatically generated by Vivado environment. But you know, in previous session for Axi slaves, I used this method. But now, today, I want to use this method because I, I believe the Axon master logic gets much more complicated than the Axon slave logic. And it's kind of more reasonable to have the Axon master plug as a completely separate module with defined ports that you can, initiate, you can send your read and write requests to it. And on behalf of you, it will generate required Axon transactions. The final, uh, in fact, way to have an Axon master, obviously, is to use the Vivado HLS. So when you are designing your module with the HLS, and in fact with C, with few lines of code, your block can have Axon master interfaces, which initiates for you required read and write transactions. Yeah, so I think we will cover this further in future. And for now, I will use, in fact, this method. So for our experiment, we want to use an Axi master bears IPIF. We want to insert it in our design. And we want to see how can we use this module to be able to initiate read and write transactions to wherever that we want in our architecture. The same as before, the set of signals which are involved in the Axi interface are divided into these channels. Clock and reset, write address channel, write data channel, write response channel, read address channel, and read response channel. The signals, obviously, they don't change in comparison with Axi slave interfaces. So the same set of channels that we had for Axi slave interfaces, we have also for Axi master interfaces. In previous session, we were developing an Axi slave interface. And now in this session, we are going to produce an Axi master interface, which is practically the other end of the link. OK, let's talk about the practical example of this design slightly. Here, we want to create a simple image rotator. Our image rotator is capable of rotating images, incoming images, or better to say stored images in the memory, 90 degrees or more, 90 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise. So here is how our hardware accelerator operates. For our experiments, we assume that the image is already in the DRAM memory. And the responsibility of the hardware accelerator is to read the image from the DRAM memory, to perform the required rotation task, and to write the rotated image back to the DRAM memory. Our hardware accelerator has an Axi slave port, 
And through this Axial Slave port, the CPU will inform our hardware accelerator about the task that it should do. Either it should rotate, for example, the image 90 degree, clockwise or counterclockwise, or it should perform a mirroring operation or whatever simple rotation opera operation that it can do. Our hardware accelerator will contain an Axi master port, and through this Axi master port, it will read the incoming image, and then it will write the final image. For the addresses of the incoming image and the final image, which are practically physical addresses in the DRAM memory, the CPU will inform hardware accelerator about these physical addresses through this Axio slave port. Finally, there is an interrupt from our hardware accelerator to the CPU, and whenever a rotation task gets finished completely, this interrupt gets enabled to inform the CPU that the task is done. So this is the hardware accelerator that we want to design. Its architecture looks kind of very simple. It will contain two Axi plugs, one Axi slave light plug, and for this guy, I will use exactly the same method that we used in previous session, session six, Axi slave interfaces. So I will use the automatic code generated by Vivado for the Axi slave plug. And for this guy, as I told you, I will use an Axi master burst IPIF. And then we will develop, in fact, the required logic, which will receive the physical address, the dimensions of the image and the command from this plug here. And then it will handle, it will manage the Axi master burst to read the pixels one by one from the incoming image address locations and to write them back in a suitable address location in the destination image. Okay, this is the end of our theoretical part of session seven. And now we go to the practical part and we see how we can design this hardware accelerator. Thanks for watching.